What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Rating Climb. We're 1100, and before we jump in, I want to give you an update. Last time I did report someone that I thought was potentially cheating, and they actually changed the name of their account and then voluntarily closed it themselves. So this was not closed by chess.com. You can see it says closed. It's inactive, but they did it themselves, I believe, which I've never seen before. So I don't really know what that means. Maybe honest cheater or something, but anyway, that's what happened. Let's jump back over to this view. Here we go, jumping into a game. All right, we got black and e4. What's on my list of openings here? I think we'll go with e5 and then, oh, knight c3. So the Vienna game. Yeah, I don't feel like there's a lot of options against this, at least not that I'm aware of. So I usually just go with knight f6. And okay, we might just get some sort of four knights game, I guess. Let me see. I don't think I have any openings that have been requested against this. Yeah, no, we're just going to develop. Let's just get all the knights out. We don't need to overthink it here. Bishop c4 attacks me here. I actually think that's a mistake. And the reason it's a mistake has to do with this little tactic where you sacrifice your knight and you fork the pieces. And so I am going to take that. It's just like super common. It's like one of the most common opening mistakes that like anybody plays, I think. I think it's like millions of people make this mistake. So you, you just sack and then you get the fork. Okay, and what happens is you get your piece back and you just get into a good position. And yes, they have the option to sacrifice here to lure the king out, but it turns out that actually giving up that bishop is not really worth it because at the end of the day, for example, takes, 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 I play d5, I get a big center, I get the bishop pair, and it's relatively easy to actually move this bishop somewhere, bring your rook over and tuck your king back and you're usually okay. So... I think already, you know, we, we have a nice position out of the opening. So just remember this one. You don't want to go bishop c4 if you're, you know, the only way to recapture is with your knight in most cases because you are you have no way to prevent the fork. Okay. Now, if there's a pawn on d3, it's a different story, right? Because if I were to do this, they would simply take my knight with the pawn and there would be no fork. Um, but in this case, you, you can't really avoid it. So we'll see how they're going to react. They... They also could probably just gambit it, castling. Uh, I don't think that's particularly good. Okay, they do go for this, which makes sense from, a, you know, you're trying to attack the king standpoint. So, yeah, I believe what we do here is just play d5 right away. Now, the only thing is I'm wondering is it does it make sense to stop the knight from coming in or maybe like bishop e7? Because let's just think about this. d5 we could probably do later if we needed to. If we do it now, let's just say this knight comes in with check. We go back. And let's just say for argument's sake, uh, I don't know, queen comes to f3. Or maybe, maybe h5, let's say h5 or f3. There is going to be checkmate. It's not that simple to defend. I guess you could go queen e7 and defend. Okay, it's probably fine. Or do we just go bishop e7? Hmm. Because bishop e7, actually d4, they're still going to be threatening to go there. So yeah, I do think we need to play d5. I do think we need to get d5 right away. So d5, let's say check. Now this is the more dangerous one followed by the queen, but we would just defend and we're, we should be in good shape. All right, d5 it is. It's still a tricky position. You have to be very careful, but it should be good for us. Okay, and that's why, you know, a lot of strong players will go for this, this trade. I mean, we are black and we have the bishop pair. And we have control over the center. That's not really supposed to happen, right? Yeah, our king's a little bit weak, but we're, we're going to be just fine. I think if I'm playing as white, this is probably the most dangerous looking move because it unleashes the queen to come in. The issue with that, though, is that after we move and the queen comes in, once I deal with the checkmate, you have to move your knight somewhere, and the knight doesn't really have any good squares. I think you have to kind of go back, and it's a bit awkward for white. So this one, yeah, I mean, then your queen can't really come in. I guess e2, but that doesn't really do much. So I don't know what white's going to do. We'll see. Maybe you could sacrifice here, but the check doesn't actually do anything. I just block... And then check, I just, okay, they just retreat. All right, so I think that's fine. We've got the center. We've got the bishop pair. 
but our king is not totally safe. So we do want to be very precise with how we develop our pieces to make sure we, we do it in the best way possible. So I want to develop the bishop. I'm, I'm really deciding right now on which of these three squares. This seems very aggressive. The issue is white's going to castle. That's kind of pretty well defended. I'm not really going to be able to take advantage of that anytime soon. Maybe later after I go rook f8 and chase this, maybe at some point. But right now, I think I would really rather focus on defending my king. And I think bishop e7 really makes sure that the knight can't come in, right? Because after something like d4 or d3, it's going to be defended. Now I have to worry about a check, which I don't really like. So I'm kind of leaning towards bishop e7. Now, bishop d6 also makes sense because we add support here. And that pawn might become attacked at some point in the future. So both of these could really make sense. You know, let me actually think about this. Let's say they do play d4 right away. And I played, let's just say, rook e8. Check. I go back. Queen comes out. See, that's the kind of thing that is just very scary. And I don't really want to even have to worry about that. So that's why I'm going to go with bishop e7. I just want to stop the knight altogether from coming in. I just don't want to deal with it. So I think this is the smartest move. It might not be the best move according to Stockfish, but sometimes you want to play the smart move and just avoid the complications unless you're totally sure. Yeah, d4 is a good move because now they're threatening here. But like I said, we've already stopped that. So we're good. Okay, I don't think we want to allow them to take us. So I think we just probably push and gain the... Yeah, just let's just push. Gain a tempo... Uh, he jumps in right away. Interesting. So I think I'm just going to take that and then bring my rook over and tuck my king back. I don't think we have any reason to be concerned. Let's go ahead and take it. Okay. So let's keep an eye on the queen. There is a check here. But if I play rook f8, queen check, and I go back, I'm actually happy. There's no knight that can jump into g5 and attack me. There's no way for the queen to really get support on the weak square. And I've got the bishop pair. Now my rook is involved. And I'm yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. So I think we go rook f8. Could also go rook e8, but I think I'd rather just have the control of this f file. So let me go just scanning, scanning, scanning. I don't see any tricks. Let's go rook f8. Okay, and like we talked about, we're just going to tuck the king back here, defend. And it's kind of like we just castled, right? And we still have our bishop pair. We have this nice open f file. We have more control over the center. Feeling very good about the position. So I assume white's going to castle. Maybe they'll bring out the bishop somewhere. I'm really expecting them to just castle. And I think what I'm going to do is develop this bishop to e6. Uh, the other thing, let's see, 3, 6, 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay. So we're not up a pawn yet. We might be able to win this pawn at some point in the future. It looks like it's a bit weak and unsupported. This could be a nice pawn chain. Yeah, but I think the top priority is to get the bishop out. So bishop e6 looks like it makes a lot of sense. We can't go to g4. We can't go to f5. d7 seems very passive. And so e6, I think, makes the most sense. Tuck the queen behind it, something like that. Should be good. Smart Hummer. Smart Hummer is taking their time. Okay, B3. So they want to Fian Kettle the bishop over here to defend the pawn. Interesting decision. Uh, I guess we could s shut down that bishop at some point in the future, but right now I think we stick to the plan. I think we need to just get the pieces out. I'm just kind of looking if there's anything else that I might want to do. You know... This move actually needs to be considered. And the reason is, no, normally I would never do that because c3 would just chase me away. But now you can't play c3, okay? And if you have to move your king, you're stuck in the center. That's not good. If you play bishop d2, I trade. Again, you're stuck in the center. So actually, on hindsight, I think I will pause my plan for a moment and go with this check. And it goes to show you how these, these simple little moves... They don't look like they're a big mistake can actually be very bad because c3 is a critical kind of defensive move in this position that you don't have anymore 
because you needed the pawn, and now you're just getting four. Yes, you have to do something awkward like this. Now the rook is stuck. You can't get the rook into the game. The king is an easy target. So now my plan actually changes to how do I attack the king? So a6 to let the bishop come over here. Looks pretty good. I could even jump in here to force the rook to move. I don't know if I want to do that, but I could. I could go bishop c5 and just attack it this way. How do you defend that, actually, if you're, if you're white? How do you defend that? The knight can't defend. No, no. The queen can't defend. It doesn't really mean anything, because I would still just take it, because it's a rook and a bishop. Bishop to e3 doesn't work, because I just take it. It's pin. f3 doesn't look very good, because now your king is really getting opened up. So I guess bishop c5 is the right move. Right? I could go here and here, too, after the rook moves, but... I don't think that really benefits me, so I think I'll just go straight for bishop c5. Let me just scan. I'm looking for checks, captures around my king. You know, am I missing any crazy tactic? I don't think so. So here we go. And that this is why white should have castled earlier. If you castle first, and then you play b3, bishop b2, you're probably fine. I'm not going to have any checks. I'm not going to have anything I can do, but now you're just in big trouble. Those, it's those very subtle, small little things that make a huge impact, right? And, you know, obviously, a lot of times, if you're playing this position as white and you do this, your opponent might not be paying attention enough to catch that. But as you get better and better, this is the kind of stuff you have to pay attention to, okay? So he goes for f4, which does allow me to on passant if I want, or just do something like e3 to block off the bishop and then try to take here. But then he could push f5, and the pawns are now marching forward. No reason to allow that. I think we just en passant and, and get the king. Okay. So there is this move bishop check. And I'm wondering what happens if the queen takes. My rook comes down. If the king goes here, I'm happy because I have a check. Forces the discover check. We're going to just take everything. But... The king could move over here, and I don't think I have a clear follow-up, so I don't believe I want to sack the bishop just yet. But I do want to figure out a way to really pressure this area of the board. How exactly do we do that? I'd love to be able to play bishop g4, but I can't. I wonder if queen d7 is actually... A good move because we are threatening to come in here the only thing i don't like is we'd trade queens still get a nice attack how else do we do this d4 try to go here but that opens up e4 b6 this is still possible maybe i could do that later i think i might start with queen d7 actually it seems like a weird move but I can't really move the queen anywhere on this diagonal, but here I, I have options. The other thing is I go bishop e6, queen d7, and then try to come in this way. That's just slow. That's just very slow. This is pretty quick. And I, I want to do something fast. Yeah, let me go with queen d7. I think queen d7 is an interesting move. And I am at that two-minute mark. So I want to start to move a little bit faster. But even if we trade queens... Okay, so he stops that. Still feel like the king is weak. It's just a question of how do we get to it. So if I could lure the queen off of this, two, so g6, bishop e7, he could still go here. Queen f7, b6, I might want my bishop to be able to come here. All right, so we have to make a move. I'm going to go with b6 just because uh, I'm going to lose on time if I don't move faster. So we'll go with b6. Let's bring the bishop over here. You might want to play c4. I think that's fine. Actually, I will. I will go ahead and play at g6. I'm trying to force the queen off of this. I want to potentially use this square to get away from the rook and line up here. So queen f7. Yeah, queen f7 looks very good, actually. Because you want to think about the weak spots, right, in the position. This is a weak spot. 
So that's what's going on here. We're just positioning this. Yes, we created some weaknesses of our own, but I'm doing it with tempo, okay? And I am doing it with like, I'm I'm the one attacking, basically. White doesn't have time to attack me. They get checkmated, right? So they have to react to this. We have options now with the bishop. We can swing it over to a6 if we want. We can just probably... I wonder if this is a good trade for us. The knight is actually doing a good job defending the king. So that, this is not out of the question. Bishop e6 seems pretty good too. Just Okay, he does that. Wait a second. How do you deal with this? I don't really see how. Because if you go there, you're walking into a uh, skewer. If you go here, I take it. If you move, I take this. If you go c4, I take it. So... I think white is actually in trouble here. We'll see if they can come up with a move. Maybe e6 to lure my queen away. No, okay, they don't do that. And this is just going to lead to a quick checkmate. Uh, let's just think about this. The king is trapped. If we can attack it, we can get checkmate. Of course, there's a free rook. But I don't want a free rook when I have checkmate. So we'll go bishop c8. And that doesn't do anything. You can't move the knight. This just delays the inevitable. Let's see, what's the best way? Do There is going to be, yeah, I think we just take and go back. Yeah, that's main two. That's main two. They can go back. Okay. So, good game to our opponent. Um, we did have a mistake. Let's check the game review here. See what we can learn from this. Um... Let me readjust the, the stats here. Sorry about that. I got all confused. There we go. Okay, so 88. Yeah, we did pretty well. We had the mistake. Oh, no. Where did the mistake go? Now it says I don't have a mistake. Interesting. Okay. Maybe it wasn't uh, that bad. Yeah, okay. I don't see a mistake anymore. I was going to look at it, but I guess it's not there. All right, let's go to the next game. And big takeaway, guys. I think... B3 was where it fell apart for white, right? As soon as you do that, you, you, you don't want to have to move your king and be unable to castle. That's a bad thing. You can't play moves like that that allow checks like this. You have to watch out for that. Okay, next game. We are white. Let's go with E4. Uh, we'll go with, uh, we'll attack the pawn. Let's go with bishop C4. And we have... Ooh, everybody's doing this anti-fried liver defense. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good. You create weaknesses along the light squares. You don't develop a piece. I'm going to go with the same thing that I recommended last time. Strike at the center. If somebody plays moves like this where they, they waste their time, you strike at the center. Now, that's interesting because instead of taking with the pawn, they take with the knight. My question to you guys is, what should I be thinking about when I see this? What should I be thinking about? Well, I should be thinking about like something like this. Because for example, if I take, I'm now threatening your knight and I'm threatening here. Now the problem I see with that is knight e6 would kind of deal with that. I think. So what if I sack the bishop first, then jump in with my knight, check. If the king just goes back, we could probably go queen h5, queen f7, force the king out. That's going to lead to checkmate guaranteed. So I could stop calculating. So really, you have to, at this point, probably come out right away. Then I just grab here. I get my piece back, and I've totally blown open the black king. So again, we see this small inaccuracy. You're supposed to take here with the pawn. Usually you take with the pawn first, because then you would avoid stuff like this. But because they did this way, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Bishop takes f7. And uh, yeah, this is this is a killer follow-up. Whenever you play these e4 openings where the bishop's on c4, the knight's on f3, you always have to consider the bishop's sacrifice. Always consider it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But if you can follow up with a knight coming in with tempo and the queen is coming, it's yeah, it's it's gonna probably lead to checkmate. And I get the bonus now that I don't even have to lose a piece. Like sometimes you sack this and there's no knight for you to recapture. I would still probably do it 
and attack the king. But in this case, it's even better because I just get a, get the piece right back. Now, that being said, I do want to start with the forcing check moves just to see what happens. So if I go check, if the king moves here, uh, that looks like a very nasty fork. It does get a little bit tricky because there's a fork here for, for black. But once we move, if they take the rook, then I can go back on the offensive with my queen or something. That looks really, really good. So yeah, queen g4. The question, I guess, is if they take my knight, what happens? I could go bishop f4 check. King would have to move probably to f6. Yeah, I don't quite see anything there. So I don't think I want to go with that, but it's worth at least checking. But I checked it and knight g6 looks, yeah, the rook probably just moves. Yeah, I think I think we just take this. Because the, the knight is actually annoying in a lot of these lines that I'm looking at where it's going to be defending the king. So taking it, not losing a piece, bringing my queen closer, it comes with a threat. That just seems like the best thing to do. So we'll just take the knight. But yeah, queen d5 is a good move. Knight g6 now, and maybe then queen e5. Just bringing out another piece. Or bishop f4. Ooh, c6. Okay, so they stop one threat. But... Yeah, there's probably much more that I can do here. So the question is, how do we figure out what to do, right? Rule of thumb is I start by looking at like the big pieces. So checks or like just big threats. Okay, so for example, check, what happens? Well, d5, takes, takes, mm, check, king maybe just moves there. There's a fork, king takes me, check, king goes back. I don't see anything. So I don't think that's good. Okay, so we can eliminate that one. If I go here, rook moves, what do I do? Well, queen e5, check. Forces the king here. Okay, now what do I do? Oh, don't really see anything. I mean, there's a check, but he just blocks. Actually, there is knight check, but no, then he probably just runs. So yeah, I'm not quite seeing anything there either can't really threaten anything else. So generally speaking, when I'm in this kind of situation and I don't see any immediate tactic or, or something really powerful, you want to bring in more pieces. So the, the next question is, how can I bring in the most effective piece? Uh, which knight c3 always is a good option. Just getting the knight where it's part of the game helps support d5. I like that. Stops any potential tactics like check and take my knight, which actually is a threat now that I'm looking at it. So knight c3 seems very good. Or maybe castling. Getting my king away from that and also preparing to play f4, f5 with my rook. That seems a little bit slower. I think knight c3 is a bit quicker to the, you know, action. So we'll go knight c3. And one thing that I learned, and I didn't learn this actually until way later in my chess career, but I used to think when I would have positions like this, they're like, okay, I have to find checkmate right now. And I would always play moves like queen c4 or knight g6 and just try to make it happen right away. And what you'll learn after you look at what Stockfish says in these types of positions for long enough is that a lot of times Stockfish is like, look, just bring more pieces in. Like, the king's not going anywhere. He, I mean, he he's in a bad position. You already have pieces out. Just bring more pieces and your position just gets better and better. And then eventually the tactic will pop up. I mean, he can't go here. He just walks into a fork. He can't go here. He just walks into a dis discovered attack. He can't go here. I just stopped that. And so I've got time. I have time. Okay. And now a move has been played. Now we can kind of recalculate some of these lines. So for example, now I can consider again, queen c4. If the king goes back, we have a fork. That looks very good. Um, if the king takes me, I would probably go with f4 check. King goes back. E5 check, king goes back, we take, yeah, that's just a trade. The king looks like it might be escaping, maybe, there's might be five. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit complicated. I'll probably avoid that. Uh, but again, I don't need to panic. I don't need to rush. I mean, I'll check this one real quick. The rook, say the rook moves somewhere, we go check, king goes back. Yeah, again, I'm just not seeing anything. So I think what we do is we bring in more pieces. So the question is, do I want my pawn? Or do I want my bishop? Or do I want to try to just castle? And they all look good for different reasons. This one looks really good because if I get the pawn to f5, the king actually hmm, doesn't want to go there because of the four. Yeah, f4 maybe is the best move. I don't know. Castling also looks very good. 
bishop f4, or bishop e, or bishop, any of these moves look good. I'm going to go with f4. When you don't know what to do, sometimes it's better to just choose one that looks good and not use up all your time. Queen b6. Okay, so queens being traded would be, I think, bad for me. Material-wise, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 4, 5. I am up a pawn. So that means trading is not out of the question. I could probably still go into an endgame where I would be happy. But is that really what I, do, what I, what I want to do? What I want to do when the king is on e6? No, it's not, right? I want to keep the pieces on the board. So let's start with the obvious move. Check. Only move. King has to go back. Okay. Uh, check. If the king goes here, we take it with check. Very happy. So the king's going to run this way. Then I could trade queens and win a free rook. That's definitely winning. That's very good. I could stop analyzing there. Sometimes I like to just check for like checkmates. Like again, let's just check one more time. Check. No, it's not quite good enough. So I think we just go with it. I don't believe. Yeah, we're just going to do it. That seems to be the best that I could see right now. And again, rather than wasting all my time trying to find something better, a rook is good enough. We'll just take the rook and be happy. So as a reminder, king is going to move. We're going to get a fork, or we could actually trade the queens at that moment and then get the fork, however you want to do it, and we get a free rook. The only legal move for black is king e7. So you have to go there. You see, all of these squares are taken. Only move. Okay, and again, I don't believe it really matters, the order here. I think we're going to arrive at the same conclusion either way. I wonder if it's better to go here, king here, queen check, king goes there, then we take checkmate. You could make an argument that that might be more precise, because I think they're going to, if they're smart, they're going to go to d8, and I will trade the queens. But if they go to e8, then I might actually go for this line. Keep the queens on the board. They, yeah, that, I think that's smart. So I think now at this point, we ha obviously have to trade the queens. Otherwise, we're just going to lose our queen. So we'll go ahead and trade, and then we'll grab the rook. Okay, and now we just have a rook. Should be relatively straightforward. So I think my top priority is going to be just getting my knight out of there. So, because it's kind of stuck and it's not very useful. So where I could go to G6 or I could go here with check and then just relocate back. I like that. I like that. Let me just go there. Let me go back. And I'm going to go to D3 where I hit the bishop. Also defend this weak spot in case the knight tries to come in and do anything. Okay, let's just go back. And tr remember, trading is going to be good for me. I am up an extra rook, right? And so any opportunity to trade pieces I will be happy about. I think here... If he trades, I might lose this pawn. Not a big deal. Uh, losing a pawn is not a big deal. I think I will just go ahead with bishop d2. Although, bishop d2 takes, takes, takes. I wish I would have a follow-up there. e5, g... Yeah, maybe I don't want to lose that pawn. Takes, takes, takes. Castle, then the rook comes in. Okay, basically, here's the thing. I want to prioritize activating my major pieces. So I'm going to allow this thing. I might end up losing two pawns in the process, but I'm like, who cares? I want to get my major pieces, my rooks into the game. I'm up a rook. So you can afford to lose two pawns if you get your pieces, you know, rolling, which is what we're going to do. Okay. I'm going to play a three to shut down the rook because I want a castle over here. Okay. And I didn't want this rook to come in and cause me problems. Not that it was a big deal. I could have played king b1 and I would have been just fine. But since I have time, why not? Black is not taking this. Now they've given me opportunity probably to, to defend or at least get my rooks involved. And so as long as we don't lose on time, we win easily. So the priority now is playing quick moves that uh, force some kind of traits. All right, so let's go h3. Notice we've got the knight sitting there. Okay, so we're defending. And remember, trading is good. And I want to trade this bishop. So I want to go here, but I can't. So let me move my rook to defend so that I can go here, which forces a trade. Remember, the more trades that I force, the closer we get to 
uh, an endgame where I have a rook and my opponent has nothing, right? That's the idea. Okay, that doesn't help avoid the trade, so we will go there. Yes, I'm going to lose a pawn, but it's more important that I trade, right? Actually, I'm not losing a pawn because the bishop is sitting there. So, okay. All right, uh, let's go rook d6. And what I'm trying to do is double up and trade everything, most likely. Even, uh, I'll consider actually sacrificing this, but then it's a bishop, not as powerful as a rook, so I probably won't sacrifice. But just getting the battery is going to tie up black's pieces. All right, king e7. Oh, they're just going to give it to me. Okay, well, obviously we take a free piece. And I could bring the rook over or I could grab some pawns. I think I'm going to value bringing the rook over first. And then we'll take a pawn next. And once we get both rooks on the seventh rank, it's very, very dangerous for our opponent. And you're going to see it's probably going to be a quick checkmate. So we'll take this guy first. Then we're going to invade. And two rooks and a bishop should very easily be able to create some kind of a checkmate threat. Also, we have the pawn that we could use as well. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and invade. I could have taken this too, but pigs on the seventh, it's too powerful. And um, this isn't going anywhere. We also have this. Okay, uh, well, I will just trade it because this is easy and simple. And I'm going to try to get a queen now. So I, what I will do is actually sacrifice this bishop to lure the king away. And the easiest way for me to get a queen without the king stopping me is to just cut it off, okay? And bring it back here. It's defended. The king is stuck. We get a queen, and we get checkmate. There's no stalemate because black has a bunch of pawns, so I don't have to worry about stalemate. And there you go. All right, good game to our opponent. Let's check the game review on this one. And 91, yep, pretty good, okay. So yeah, and we see right right away, I bet that was knight takes d4, yeah, it was. Okay, let me show you this. That was the, the big mistake. And it just goes to show those small little things, even on move four, make a big, big difference, right, in, in how the game, you know, if black just takes here, they're still slightly worse, but it's just very slight, okay? So you gotta watch out for these sacrifices. Extremely common in these e4, e5 openings where the bishop's on c4, the knight's on f3. This is, yeah, super, super common. And I guess stockfish, yeah, it says actually knight g6 maybe was a little bit better, but queen takes d4, very, very close second. And then the best move according to stockfish was f4, but knight c3 is right there. And so, yeah, basically what I was saying, just bring more pieces in. f4, I guess, was more powerful. I didn't realize how powerful f5 was going to be until later in the game, which is what Stockfish is saying. That's why it wanted me to start with f4 rather than knight c3. But knight c3 also also really, really good. Also knight g6. It likes knight g6. Yeah. So anyway, let's keep going. I think we've already, we've already talked about this enough. All right. Here we go. Jonathan Langley plays e4. And I believe... I have, what's on my list? Scandinavian, we've played quite a few times. Pushgaz, Gambit, Rousseau, Gambit. Owens defense. We haven't played the Owens defense in a while. I think we should play the Owens defense. So we're going to go b6. We're going to Fian Kettle the bishop over here to attack the center. And then we're going to, ooh, ooh. I, that's not a good move usually because your bishop is now stuck and your pawn is now stuck and everything gets bottled up. Don't love that from our opponent. I'm going to play e6. This is kind of the Owens defense setup. You let both bishops out, and you play knight f6 to attack the center. Normally, I would go here and like attack the knight or something, but it's not there to attack, so we're going to just bring out the knight instead. We are threatening to win a pawn, and if they push on me, you know, yes, it's annoying because we have to move our knight, but you have to remember, every time a pawn moves forward, it creates weaknesses. So, like, for example, when this pawn moves forward, then the d5 square all of a sudden becomes available. I can use that for my pieces, right? So it's a trade-off. That's why I have to be careful pushing those pawns forward. So they play knight c3, and so now I think I will play bishop here because it is threatening again to win a pawn. I wasn't going to go there before, but since I have a target, now I will. Okay, notice how all of our pieces are kind of coordinating to put pressure 
on the same area of the board. Yeah, this is a good move. They're just defending their pawn. That's a good move. So I think what I'm going to do is just castle, get my king out of the center. Um, I have to be a little bit careful because what I don't want it to happen here is e5, sacrifice, knight g5. Okay, they can't play knight g5. So I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. But you have to watch out for that Greek gift, sorry, that Greek gift sacrifice. Greek gift sacrifice is very dangerous. You could just lose the game if you're not careful. So e5 here, bishop takes, knight jumps in. If I go back, the queen comes to h5 and then checkmate on h7. Sometimes you just can't stop it. In this case, the fact that this pawn is not forward, I think I'm okay. Knight h4. Okay, that looks like an awful move, and there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, well, I say a couple. There's there's one reason why, mainly. Well, two, two reasons, sorry. I'm, uh, first of all, it's undefended, and it's lined up with my queen. So I'm already like thinking there's got to be some tactic here, something, right? The other thing is you just moved a knight to the side of the board. It just doesn't exert control over the center. It's, it just doesn't do as much. So those things combined make me feel like that's a mistake. So, yeah, let's just start with the obvious. Can I take this? And win a, win a, win a pawn. Because if you take, you can't take with the queen and threaten checkmate because my bishop would just take you. If you take with the knight, thank you very much, I just take this. If you take with the bishop, though, that is actually an issue. Because now if I take your knight, you take me and I'm in trouble. And if I take you, you could actually take with the queen and defend. So by some miracle, maybe it's not a blunder. Bishop takes, takes, queen takes, defends, and actually attacks two things at the same time. Wow. Yeah, that's, a, that's amazing. Um, I could go knight d5, takes, takes. Or I could just play d5. If they push, I jump my knight in. And now it's a different story because you don't have a threat on my bishop. Yeah, so maybe I should play d5. There's also knight c6. Hold on, knight c6 because I might want to jump into one of these squares. Hmm. Yeah, knight c6 kind of threatens this again because now on bishop takes, I just simply take. So knight c6 or d5, it's not actually super clear. Kind of like knight c6 because... I don't know, I just feel like this knight's going to do a good job of jumping around to some places. Let me go with knight c6. Hold on, let's just consider e5 for one moment. One moment. e5. Okay, e5 is actually annoying because if I, let's just say I move here. Queen h5. I don't actually love that. Okay, so maybe I will go here so that I can play knight, e, knight e4. All right. It's, you know, sometimes these awkward moves are actually not mistakes, even though they look like they should be. And maybe that's what's happening here. Okay, he does push, and I do want to play knight e4, I think. And the reason is, I don't want to go here, guys, because look at this. All my p minor pieces are on the queen side. And all of white's pieces are starting to line up on the king side, where my king is. So queen h5, or sacrificing, or f4, f5. You don't want to put yourself in those situations. So by jumping into e4... I'm just offering a trade of knights, essentially. You take me, okay, he does, and now I take you. We just traded knights, but I eliminate one of the pieces that was on the king side around my king. I feel much safer. That's essentially what's happening. Now, the question is, does it make sense to take? Take, no, it does not. That would be a huge mistake. So only move can be this. And by the way, the reason it's a mistake is because now I have this guy, and I don't have time to take this. So that's not what I want to do. Yeah, so we just take this guy. So the knight's going to move somewhere. Probably going to go to g3, I would think. And then I think we just keep developing. Probably going to bring my knight somewhere. I'm not sure which square yet. If he does go to g3. The, the drawback of c6 is I block my pawn. But the benefit is then I could use this square to attack. This one is nice because then I could play c5, c4 if I want. Um, this is He might just play c3 and then my knight looks kind of silly on c6. So I think the smart thing to do is go to d7. 
Yeah, I think that's the smart thing. Because this is usually a useful move, c5. So I don't really want to block that off. That's that's the issue. Okay, a3 attacks my bishop that way. All right, so we're probably just going to go back to e7. Uh, I don't want to get trapped, obviously. Here looks like I would just kind of waste some time again. So I think relatively straightforward decision. We just go back. Okay, let's play b4. A lot of times what I like to do is attack those pawns. Um, maybe even here, actually, because c5 is nice because if b5, then I trap the bishop. Yes, c5. Let's do that. The idea is we're threatening to trap the bishop. Of course, they could take, but then it, yeah, then it allows either my knight or my bishop or my pawn to jump in. Um, the question is which one? Okay, the pawn looks good if I can get here, but if they go bishop b5, knight b6, that still looks pretty good. Let's do the pawn. A lot of times when you have pawns side by side, it's just a good situation to be in because you have so many options of pushing forward, right, and creating different kind of threats, and they just control like a nice section of the board together. Um, yeah, it's just it just looks really good. I think knight c5 is also very, very good, but this is an immediate threat. On bishop b5, I just go knight b6, and I actually have a bonus threat. He didn't see it. Didn't see it. So we're going to trap the bishop. It's, it's, it's gone. We've got everything defended. Okay, and we could trade queens because we're up a piece. Actually, I think I will do that because when I'm up a piece, I want to simplify. Go into the end game. So I will trade. All right, now I'm going to look for targets. Um, I'm going to look for targets and I'll trade this first and then I'll grab the, the free pawn hitting this one. Basically look for targets and look to activate my rooks. Obviously I have to save my knight first. Where's a good square? I think c4 looks pretty good. We can create a blockade if we want with my bishop or just bring the rooks over. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just attack. Why not attack the weak pawn? Oh, you know what? I could play bishop d6 and trade some more pieces. Yeah, I might do that next. Let's see how he's going to defend this first. You also go bishop f6, actually, just to attack this way. Okay, so I said I wanted to trade, but I also am going to be bringing the pawn to support this. So how badly do I want to trade? Maybe I'll start by just continuing to attack. I mean, yes, you want to trade and simplify, but you also don't want to like always make trades that are putting you at a disadvantage. Because if you make too many of those trades, you could give your opponent enough counterplay. So that's why I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to, you know, help them strengthen this weakness. So that being said, getting the bishop pair looks really great. I might just do it. And then I could also even swing my rook over. Yeah, I am going to do it. Because I want to get my rooks into the game. So this is a clear way to do it. My bishops are so powerful. Just slicing across the board. I think this is definitely the way to go. Okay. Didn't stop me from invading. You guys know what I'm going to do. Second rank. You got to pay attention to these opportunities. And I have the bishop supporting it. That's super dangerous for white. Super, super dangerous. Okay, they try to stop me. But there is a problem with that move. What is it? They left this guy undefended. So we're going to win some material here. We're just going to win some material. You know, I probably should have taken it with the rook, actually, because I just put myself into a pin. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. I should have taken with the rook. Yeah, I, I immediately regret my decision. Well, I'll just defend it, and then I'll move my rook away. I don't want to stay in this pin. So I need it to be defended so I can leave. Uh, knight f5, I'm not worried about because then the, the bishop comes crashing through. But I actually should have taken with the rook. I think that would have been a more powerful move. Okay, he does go knight f5, but this is this is not going to end well for, for white here. Let's take that. 
So we're threatening immediate an immediate checkmate. And I guess he has to take, right, to stop that. But it still allows me to take this. I could also just... Um, Yeah, actually, hmm, takes. There's this move, knight f3, where I'm like, does knight f3 actually, knight f3 is kind of an amazing move. Because I can't take because of the checkmate. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so I'm going to avoid that by just taking the knight. That's amazing. It's never too late to blunder. <laughs> well, we can actually check that with Stockbridge. I think that would have been a blunder if I took what I was going to do. Okay, so he takes there. I could go check first. No, I'm just going to take this. I'm just going to... Sometimes the threat... What is the saying? The, the threat is more powerful than the... execute. Is that the execution or something like that? The, the, just having the threat can be more powerful than actually doing it. I don't think I said that right. Of course, there's only one way that I lose this game. Actually, there's two ways. I lose on time. Or I get back rank checkmated. So there, there you go. Uh, that would be one way to lose. So if I take, he takes me as a trade. I have a more powerful move. Do you guys see what it is? Discovered check. And then we take the rook. I'm actually going to take with the bishop because I want to leave the king cut off. And he does resign. Okay. So let's check the game review. Okay, 83. Um, so we probably did make a few mistakes in there. And we did have a miss. Let's see what the miss was. Queen d4. What? Queen d4. What is... Queen d4... C3. Oh, you just went a pawn? You just simply went a pawn? Oh, it's a little fork. It's just a fork. That's all it is, just a fork. Interesting. And C why was c5 not so good, though? Because if he just plays c3 and defends, ah, he gives the bishop a place to go. And actually, I don't really have a great position anymore, or not that great. Interesting. Okay. But of course, after this, then it's, then it's all over. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. Uh, I have time for one more game. Let's jump in. We did play the Owens defense. Let me put that on my spreadsheet here. E4. Okay, this time I'll play E5. And we have, uh, which gambit? Bush gas gambit. We don't really get a chance to play this. Let's try it. Let's see. Maybe they'll take it. Maybe we'll get lucky. No, Bishop C4. Um, yeah, what is this? Did I play this last time as some weird gambit? I think I did play it, and I think we got into a decent position. If I defend the pawn, I think that might be a mistake. Oh, this is interesting, actually, because there's this tactic, right? We've seen it already. There's this tactic, which usually is bad news. Oh, no, but the bishops... No, it's not. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... I, I, what am I even saying? This is just the Yuko piano. Sorry, guys. Sometimes my brain, like, doesn't work. Yeah, this is... It, the, the, the reason that the tactic doesn't work here, takes, takes, sorry, takes, takes, and fork, is because I get an extra piece. So you actually end up losing two pieces. You only get one piece back. That's not a good trade for white. Okay, they play d3, and let's just develop the knight. We'll just get it out. Okay, so we have this weird sort of fried liver attack with some extra moves thrown in. And I'm not sure exactly what that means. I think the simplest thing is we just castle because normally when this happens, you don't have a good way to deal with it. But in this position, I do. Castling is fine, right? Because a rook and a pawn for a knight and a bishop, I would be happy for that trade all day. Like give me the knight and the bishop every time, right? The white's not really going to do that. So queen f3. So whenever I see a queen come out, I always want to ask the question, can I attack it somehow? So knight to d4. And if you don't want to get forked and lose a rook, you have to go back. 
that seems pretty good. Now, maybe White's plan is to give me that rook and try to attack. Okay, but I, I think I'm going to go for it. My position looks pretty good. I still have my knight on f6, defending my king. Uh, and I don't think we... I mean, even d5 is a nice move that you want to keep in the back of your mind. Ooh, he does. What did I just say? What did I just say? d5. Yes, that's cool. There's a fork. But look at this. And why, why is d5 so much better? Number one, it's a tempo move, just like this is. So they're both kind of the same. But it, it, it blunts the bishop from attacking. And it forces the queen to move. And then I could probably do that next. Maybe after I take this bishop. Because right? it just eliminates an attacking piece. Here's the thing. This is good, but that rook is doing zero to attack my king. Zero, right? This bishop is actually a major piece. So going d5 and getting rid of that guy is going to be more valuable than getting this rook in the corner. Also, a lot of times the knight ends up getting trapped. So you end up just getting like a rook for a knight, which is an exchange trade, as opposed to a free bishop. And a free bishop's going to be more valuable. Okay. So again, he's trying to do something, but now you're missing the bishop and, and white's already kind of running out of pieces. I'm going to take the bishop because we still have this threat. And if you castle, do you see what I'm going to play? You guys should be able to see this relatively easily. If white castles, what are we going to do? They would have castled. We would have played 92 check, forking the king and the queen. Okay. He does this. Which does attack the bishop, but I'm thinking I'm just going to go with the fork still and then move my bishop to attack the queen. It basically, the way you want to think, oh no, I did not click on that. Okay, that was a terrible move. I Somehow I had my knight selected and I somehow clicked the square. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, what I want, what I was going to do was take with check. Once the king moved, I was going to go bishop d4, hit the queen. The queen moves. Then I take the rook and I'm totally winning. Now, I think he's getting his piece back, which is... Oh, no. I have a tactic. I have a tactic, actually. If I take, he takes me, he gets the piece back. I'm not even that much better. I'm still better, but not that much. At least I have this tactic with a fork, possibly. Man. The mouse slip, guys. Ugh. It could have been worse. Like, there are a lot of worse mouse slips, though, than 96. I mean, so I, I should be thankful. I should be thankful. Okay, yeah, we're going to save the bishop because he doesn't want to take it. I think he should have taken it. Knight here moves his king, takes, then he takes me, I take him, and he's actually even. He's got two pieces, I have two pieces. This actually would have been an even trade. This way, I'm going to be up a piece. So that was a mistake by, by White there. So the mouse slip almost cost us big time, guys. Almost cost us big time. But now we're back in the driver's seat because we're up a piece, and you can't take it because of the fork. Oof. Scary moment, scary moment right there. I need to add a, a column or a, a row on my chart here for mouse slips, man. All right, bishop g5, pins the knight. I think we want to take here and just bust open the king. Oh, you know what? Bishop e uh, d4 is actually really, really good. Look at that. It's a fork, queen and, and rook. Yeah, that's even better. All right, let's go there. Very, very good. He might play bishop takes f6, takes, takes. But I think I would still take here. Grab the rook. Yeah, it's still going to be good for me. Okay, he doesn't do that. All right. So this is defended. We're not worried about that. That's going to be a rook. He might go bishop h6, try to checkmate. But we have options, for example, knight h5 to defend and attack at the same time. So we'll take it. I also have other options. I could go knight g4 and block off the queen. Might even be more powerful. Yeah, look at this. Okay, hold on. So here's the thing. Knight h5, the queen has to move. And if you move, let's just say... 
G5, I would trade and take a rook. I'm very happy. But knight g4 also threatens the bishop. And positions my knight in a nice aggressive place to attack the king. h3 takes. Oh no, I could actually take with the knight. Yeah, I, okay, so that's. I mean, is it better than knight h5? I don't know. They're both like really good. But I'll go with knight g4. I like knight g4. Of course, we have to stop checkmate somehow. I'm just figuring out the best way to do it. I think this is good. We still have this rook stuck in the corner. It's not going anywhere. That's the problem with this position. Okay. Yeah, they're hoping I took this way, and then they're going to try to like do something like this. But I'm just going to take it with my knight. And then my knight comes back, and you no longer have the threat because the bishop is gone. And guess what? You still lose the rook in the corner. So now it's time before the rook escapes. Let's take it. Okay, am I ahead? Yes, I am. So trading is generally good. Let's take the knight. Okay, I see a check. Is it a good check? I'm not sure. King's going to move. I see another check. Ooh, you guys see how powerful that is? Check. King moves. Check. Look at this. Look at all the squares that we're controlling of the board. So the, key, the, the only move would be queen e3. So we just win the queen. Of course, they can go here and we trade, but trading is good. Okay, they didn't see it. You could also just take a rook, but I'm going to do this first, and then take the rook. Notice, get your priorities in order, right? Don't just take the rook. Get the queen trapped first, take it with check, then take the rook, and it's just that much better for you. Yeah, and they do resign. So we survived the mouse slip. I bet... I bet that that blunder was the mouse slip. Let's take a quick peek at that and see. Um, but that's what I'm expecting. What is happening? Game review is not going to work. Come on. No? Let's try it again. Game review's down? No! I wanted to see my, my blunder. Come on. Come on, chess.com. Not right now. Okay. We might have to do this the old-fashioned way. Let me see if I can analyze it. And see where my blunder was. So, I had a great position. Yeah, best move. Guess what Guess what it was. Knight takes c2, check. Followed by... Oh, queen takes d3. Yeah, that's even better. What? Let's say the king went here. Oh, that's just checkmate. Okay, so that was actually better. I didn't see that. But bishop d4 would have been um, a powerful move also. This is what I wanted to play. And then, not sorry, not that. Then grab the rook. What I actually played, we went from minus 10. Are you guys seeing that? Oh, I was covering the board. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, what I said was, Knight takes c2, which what I wanted to play was the best move. And then queen d3 is what I didn't, didn't see. That was even more powerful than bishop d4. But we went from minus 9, minus 10, to minus 2 or minus 3. Yeah, that was definitely the blunder. That was definitely the blunder. I don't know why game review is not working, but... Yeah, it's still down. Oh, wait. Nope, there it is. Sorry. I'm all over the place. I think it was working, and I just closed it too soon. There it is, there it is, there it is, okay. Yeah, 75, 61, and if I click on the miss or mistake, yeah, it's 96, yep. Okay, as expected, um, that was a very tactical game. Lots of tricky things, and so hopefully you still learned something from that. Um, I have to go, guys. Thank you for being here. We're 1141, approaching that 1150 mark, and uh, yeah, good to see everybody. I'll see you next week. And as always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.